All right, we're back. So we have just come back from one month in Europe. For you, it hasn't been that long, but we've taken a nice little break away from social media, from the mug, but we are so glad to be back now. Today we're filming a little special sit down video where we answer some of the most asked questions that we've had for quite a long time. One of them being how much was the Unimog build? Mm -hmm. How did we finance it? What is it like to live in a Unimog compared especially to a 4x4? And as well, what are our future plans? So this is what we're gonna do. But before we jump on the question, we would love you to please like the video already, leave a comment, just help us to get back out there with the algorithm. Yeah, taking time off YouTube really it kicks your ass basically yeah, the algorithm. Yeah. So YouTube is not a nice boss for that. It's quite ruthless. So yeah. we're basically taking unpaid leave. So yeah, that would really help us and we would really appreciate that. So thank, thank you. you in advance. So we uh, just came back from Europe as Ange said. We mostly went over to see Ange's family in France. So we went to so Paris good. for a week, which was really nice. And we also went to a very good friend of mine's wedding just above Barcelona in Spain. And then Ange and I also decided, because we we're going all that way, we would have a couple... 30 hours journey. Yeah, we would have a couple more weeks where we could just have a bit of a holiday and a break from living out of a truck, I guess. So we went to Granada and saw the beautiful Alhambra, which mm. is like a Moorish, uh, Moroccan style old fortress and palace which was insanely beautiful. beautiful we really loved it and, we, and such a huge contrast from well the whole of spain was a huge contrast mm. from australia because of all that history and yeah, it was great then we also went to seville or sevilla that was really really beautiful, beautiful as well city probably we one of the most few beautiful days yeah most beautiful city i've ever seen i think in all of europe I loved seville and then we spent the most time on the island of mallorca so good. off the coast of spain and that was really really cool we yeah. had a little fiat 500 that i was hooning around the hills so in, good. getting some swims in it's and lots beautiful of nice sun. island yeah it's like a very much a contrast between the mountains on the west and the beautiful like creek like on the and coves on the east beautiful i loved it and I've got some big news, or we have some big news. I proposed to Ange, and she said yes. <laughs> Luckiest man in the world. So I'd been wanting to propose to Ange for quite some no time idea. now. It's always been in the back of my head for a long time now. And uh, I'd even kind of spoken to Ange about it and, you know, rings and blah, blah, blah. And um, I decided that kind of Australia, because we're here, we're outdoors all day, every day at beautiful beaches and stuff like that. It wasn't exotic enough for me to feel like there was a right moment to do it. So I'd always kind of figured that as soon as Ange and I go overseas, I'll try and do it then. So as soon as we realized we were going to Europe, I thought, right, that's the best time to do it. And I bought the ring with my <laughs> mum. From? From Bunnings, <laughs> yes. So I am a very romantic person and I chose out a very beautiful gold hose clamp mm. for Ange. Yeah, but no, the special. real reason was because Ange and I were always going to decide to tattoo rings on. So uh, that was... It's, we had that discussion a long time ago. I, for me, I don't see it a good way to spend money. I didn't want Chris to spend heaps of money on a diamond or something. I'd rather we use that money for like a really nice... I guess travel like experiences so and that's why it doesn't fit our lifestyle like I don't wear any jewelry as you can see in anything so yeah we did our first tattoo yeah our first tattoos all right and before we start with the question we would like to thank today's sponsor for this video Surfshark VPN so if you're not aware unfortunately last year we have our YouTube channel got hacked just overnight no idea what happened and because of that we lost our source of income overnight and that was a really scary moment for us mm -hmm. so we changed a few things including getting a VPN and we got Surfshark VPN and we've been very happy with it because we haven't had any issues since then so touch wood Fingers crossed. it stays the same and we just come back from Europe where we connected to Wi-Fi in airports, hotels, all kind of like unsafe places in that respect for hackers with passwords. So we made sure to use Surfshark VPN not only on our phone, we've got like an app that we can use or as well on the laptops, just we've got like a little extension on Google Chrome. So super handy for that. We can have one account and share it together with unlimited devices. So really good to be able to do that. 
So basically, if you're not familiar with a VPN, so Surfshark VPN helps you to protect your data online. So every time you put a password, every time you do research, none of this can be accessed by hackers, for example. So I think nowadays that's quite important. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you are going overseas in the near future or if you often work from cafes or things like that, a VPN is super important. Mm -hmm. So thanks to Surfshark VPN today, we can offer you 83% discount on your subscription and as well the antivirus for free. So you just have to click the link in the description and that's just under $3 per month. So I think it's pretty good deal. Pretty good. All right, to the question. All right, so first up, a question we get asked quite a lot is how much did the build cost us in total? Now we had a rough idea of a budget in our heads, but we had no experience. But really happily we went bang on budget at a hundred thousand australian dollars which is a lot of money but i think it would have been difficult for us to achieve what we've achieved with less money than that mm -hmm. now the way we could do it for 100k including the truck was because as you know we did everything ourselves apart from one major thing which was having the walls of the box put together mm -hmm. that sapped a large portion That's of that budget portion, yeah. yeah that sapped a lot as you know and that was a real fiasco then the other thing that sapped a lot of the budget was obviously the truck which was $28,000 so we were including that in the budget and the third big one was the tires that was was it 6,000 it was more than 6,000 Australian dollars for the tires all up so and then you've got all the other bits and pieces so a hundred grand all up to have our, our house. house on wheels uh, and the Unimog all done up yeah and i think as well without cutting corners like there are things that we could have gotten cheaper uh, but i'll say we would have regretted in the future like there's been some big expense in that regard. yeah so t-slot was one of them the the aluminium t-slot that we built everything out of it didn't end up being astronomically expensive at all it actually ended up being a bit cheaper than we were worried it would be but i would say doing it from cheap wood for mm -hmm. all the cabinetry mm -hmm. and the structure would have been cheaper still but, but heavier. Well, yeah but and we're really happy with with the t-slot but that does make it a bit more expensive if you decided not to go down that route for sure and a lot of people ask us how do you finance that like how did you do it we are not rich we don't have a lot of savings mm. so the first thing we did unfortunately we had to sell the jeep the general and luckily for us covid prices really were favorable i guess for the seller last year mm -hmm. uh, so we got a good price for it and as well we sold all our camping gear so we sold the rooftop tent the awning uh air compressor like everything yeah the kitchen we, yeah we it took a little bit of umming and ahhing but we decided to sell the jeep not stock but fully done it but without the camping mm -hmm. overlanding gear so we got 40 was it 41 42 mm -hmm. 41 and a half thousand dollars for the jeep from memory mm -hmm. and then we got about maybe eight or nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars for all that camping gear so about half of our entire budget we already had hold up in that jeep anyway so that wasn't we went out of pocket for that yeah that was good then the next half i guess it's a combination of the youtube revenue which is our main source of income so thanks to, to you, you guys. watching the ads right now so thank you so much as well we've got our patron uh, supporters which it, it's crazy to think that we've got some people who want to do like a little bit more and extra support we very lucky and very grateful very so humbling. thank you to our very patron humbling. community and then I guess people who've bought stickers, people who have um, just, I guess, done like little contribution like that. And as well, I guess a few sponsors that we've had as well along the way, which has been amazing in that respect. So just to give you a rough idea what kind of sponsors or we've had for example raptor we spoke about it um just an exchange of product in collaboration so mm -hmm. we didn't get paid but we got the product for free so that really helped in that respect uh yeah. we got some really good collaboration some of the brands did some discounts so yeah anything went a very long way in that respect yeah so we reached out to those sponsors ourselves because they were always the product that we wanted to use so mm -hmm. we didn't cut corners on any part of the build we approached those companies and we're like look if you would like us to showcase it a bit more more uh, or um, to have it kind of we figured this was almost a little bit like a walking billboard for some mm -hmm. some companies and we were really fortunate that they jumped on board and uh, a lot 
of what we do we do a lot behind the scenes for brands as well which you wouldn't see so it's not just what you've seen on YouTube and then even adding to that even what's already adding up is now on YouTube we've been granted the ability for our viewers that's you guys to be able to press is it like a little love heart super thanks. it's a super thanks so if a patron membership isn't something that you're interested in if you don't want to be subscribed to a different website mm -hmm. you can actually just press that button on YouTube now directly in our video and we'll get yeah super thanks I think it's even like a fiver or something like that and uh, and that's already started to add up a little bit so thank you so much for that and um, yeah that's kind of mostly about the sponsors yeah, I, I think guess. So. All right, so the next kind of like question that we get quite often is what is it like to overland and live in the Unimog compared, for example, to the Jeep that we add, like a four by four in general. So we've got quite a lot of things to tick off. So that's why we've got our phone with our little notes. I'll get Chris to start off. Yeah, so first up, we, we love both so we really loved both now something we loved about the jeep was that it was it was just ready to rock we could just fire it down any track it was an awesome scouting recon vehicle but to me i don't know about with edge i can't speak for her but to me it always felt like a temporary a temporary house so we always knew that we'd have to chase the really warm weather mm -hmm. and there was never any time where you could just chill on a couch like here and that was probably one of the things I miss the most it makes me sound lazy but sometimes you just want to get out of the elements and just chill the hell out in front of the TV or in front of a laptop watching Netflix or something we could never do that in the Jeep we had to always sit outside with the bugs and the elements and the only thing we could do in the rooftop tent is sleep you couldn't sit up and, and watch a movie there. very easily so it's two very different beasts what we've got here now and we tried really hard with the Unimog to make sure it's as off-road capable as possible so that we can still do all the stuff that we loved in the Jeep. Now we can't do everything we could do in the Jeep. We knew that as soon as you start ticking some boxes you have to put a cross in other boxes. Would you agree? Yeah. So so that's been interesting and and we're still coming to grips with that and trying to have a bit of a different lifestyle now first up i'll say just to add to that any vehicle would have pros and cons so what we've gained we've had to make compromises and for me that was the hard part to i guess adjust from the jeep i was constantly thinking of things that i liked about the jeep that was a bit different but mm. i guess you just adapt and you learn to focus more as on the positive about your new vehicle and your new setup which i think was quite important to do that transition in that respect and as well one thing as well to add is one of the main reasons as well we start thinking about the unimog is actually covid lockdown where we spent around seven weeks in albany literally almost five weeks in the rain every day and the cold yeah. and that was rough like we <laughs> yeah that was not an enjoyable time i'd say if we would have had the mug for during the lockdown it would have been like sweet <laughs> it would have yeah. been so much better and in case you haven't been following the channel for a, a long time we built the uni mug for three we didn't build it for Ange and I. If we were to just be Ange and I cruising around the world in a vehicle, we probably would have chosen a Land Cruiser Troopy. I think that would have probably been the better solution. But we want to have a baby and be able to travel on the road, hence the Unimog. So this is a three-person vehicle. Should I go over the pros and you go over the cons? Sounds good. Awesome. Okay, so it's a bit of a list, but um, probably helps to try and flesh out what's going on. So first up, a big pro of the Unimog is that it has such a huge GVM. We've got that 12-ton GVM with the Jeep we were over GVM I mean keep that secret but we were definitely over GVM and we had nowhere near the amount of stuff we would have loved to have had on the road it's nice being minimalist but to a degree you still need some stuff when you leave full time yeah exactly so and we haven't maxed out our GVM anywhere near on here and we've still carrying I mean you've seen how much stuff we're carrying <laughs> and we want to be adding more weights so that we can do more gym work we want to be adding a motorbike we want to even potentially add a kayak so and we can still do that and be nowhere near the threshold of this carrying capacity for the vehicle so that's a big one there then obviously you've got the ability to carry way more water more fuel and more food now with the Jeep we could have never done long period expeditions like we can in this because we couldn't have carried that amount for most of the time in the Jeep we had 20 liters of water and then we upgraded to 60 liters and it took up a huge amount of space mm -hmm. so here we got a ridiculous amount 
Um, now we've got uh, less expenses because we can stock up a whole bunch of food and fuel where it's cheaper in the main town. So then when we go through the tiny remote towns in Australia where it gets much more expensive, we can sometimes actually negate that and skip it all together. We're also saving money in terms of the shower. Because we have a shower on board, we can obviously shower here every night, which is fantastic. <laughs> Whereas with the Jeep, we would really very seldom properly shower. We would mainly swim in the ocean or okay. in rivers or we would go to a gym and have a workout and use their shower or, or we would go to park. a caravan park mm -hmm. and pay a fiver each to use their shower. Yeah. We don't have to do that so we're saving a bit of money in that yeah, respect. Yeah, it still adds up. Uh, we've got a large fridge freezer which we only had a 40 litre chest fridge freezer in the Jeep. Now we've got the like 200 litre and we had to choose between it being a freezer or a fridge. Now we've got both so that's a huge bonus especially for me. <laughs> I love to eat. Huh? Uh, we've got a huge solar array so we can now live off grid for a long time. Uh, one issue with the Jeep is our solar setup was very, very average Basically. and we we could charge our laptops, but sometimes we couldn't even charge our laptop. At least here we can run cooking and everything now in hot water, so that's really, really nice. We've got longer fuel range than we do on the Jeep, even though it's expensive, we do have, we can carry more fuel, which is nice. We couldn't have done that with the Jeep unless we added another long range tank, but then we were already at GVM, mm -hmm. so it would have made that worse. I'll do a little calculation and I'll put what's our range currently um, mm -hmm. on our average. Even though that seems Obviously to just be all over trips. the show with the with this truck, which is crazy, but uh, awesome Unimog community. No offense, but a lot of the time the Jeep community would be having cat fights between each other and uh, the Unimog community not at all. So mm, it's mainly really people who are really, really enthusiastic about Unimogs and they've just been a huge amount of help. So that's been really awesome. We loved the Jeep community, but yeah, you would probably know what I'm saying. There's just a lot of members who didn't need to be there. Whereas the or Unimog just, community I guess more it's more tightly knit. And I guess most people were going to a shop to get things done was like almost everyone as a Unimog owner give them a crack themselves and it's yes. quite a nice DIY community in and that respect. everyone with a Unimog always has questions because there are just some peculiar <laughs> aspects about this vehicle that you have to ask someone, you can't completely learn it yourself. Mechanically, I believe this vehicle is more mechanically reliable than the Jeep and probably most other vehicles on the road. One of the reasons being that it has so few electrics and that can be, as you know, a massive issue with these modern vehicles. If a sensor goes wrong, uh, you're stuffed. Whereas here, so little electrics, I could easily work out any kind of electrical problem on this truck, touch wood. And mechanically, it's a very reliable sound engine that'll just go and go and go again, hopefully. And um, so that's really nice. Mechanically, it's pretty sound. So that's cool. We can get out of the cold, the hot weather. We can get away from the bugs. We can get away from the rain in this really, really easily. In fact, too easily we're finding. Whereas the Jeep, again, we couldn't. We could, uh, basically if it was a windy night, we would have a really bad night. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, that, and that was something we wouldn't talk about much in the, in the vlogs because overall we would sleep really well in the rooftop tent. In fact, sometimes I would say we slept better in the rooftop mm -hmm. tent than in here. Mm -hmm. And I believe the reason being is that you've got all the fresh air going over your mm -hmm. face of a nighttime. And um, yeah, awesome night's sleep, looking at the stars, which we can't so much do in here, which we miss. But overall, it's just, it's nice to be out of the elements when you're sleeping, we find. And that's most of the pros here. Again, we're carrying our house everywhere, which is a huge pro because we'll have like a stressful time down a tight, narrow track. But then we park somewhere and reward. we can be like, cool, we can just chill here for two weeks if we like. Yeah. This is our house, we've got nowhere to be. Everything we need is in this vehicle. So that is really, really nice. And finally, the off-road capabilities of this truck are ridiculous. All right, and now I guess I'll uh, start with the con. I guess the main one will be the higher fuel consumption. So on average, we're around 27.2 liter per 100. Obviously, we could have a way lower average if we're not going off-road like almost all the time, but that's not what the vehicle, I guess, is designed for. We don't want to skip a track just so that we can have a better average. <laughs> then, obviously, we are limited by the height, the width, and the length of the vehicle that compared to the Jeep was like so nimble. Um, but 
overall we haven't had that many issues on tracks we wanted to go to that we couldn't because of the height or anything mm -hmm. we just made it work so you would have seen on some videos i guess the holland track we were that was mostly the height i guess the issue on the holland track we had to cut a few branches and just like push trees and yeah just so drive slow so far the width hasn't been an issue at all we can um, just push through bushes that's absolutely fine we've got a raptor paint which we don't care we've got scratches and things like that we just don't exactly. want damage mostly on our solar panels on the <laughs> top that's why we're a bit careful obviously a future potential upgrade will be some bar work but at this stage we don't have it so that yeah that will is be we okay. definitely want bar work it's just i can't do it myself so uh, and we need to find someone who can do it kind of on the spot which i think is going to be really hard obviously to drive a unimog you need to have um another license so you need a, a minimum mr license mm -hmm. a medium rigid chris went for heavy rigid so that's something you have to consider is as one extra cost so obviously yeah. you can't just go on the normal license it wasn't difficult it was just it did end up being quite expensive mm -hmm. mm. The parts in general are a bit more expensive, not all of them, but for example, like let's say the tires, there's not a chance, there's not many options. So like 1400 was basically our only option. There was one Chinese option at like $900, but we just prefer to go a little bit mm. higher quality, just in case, because we know how important tires are. And we do get asked, is it difficult to find parts for this vehicle? In Australia, not at all. Mm. There's obviously so many Unimogs because of the army, same as in New Zealand. So no, we've had zero issue with parts yeah. and I'm very confident we'd be able to get any part that we needed here. Thanks to companies like Mog Central, mm -hmm. they just, they sell every part that you yeah. would need Online. for reasonable prices um yeah, yeah it's so been good, good. Uh, now, I guess in terms of driving experience, it is a bit more tiring than just like a normal four wheel drive because obviously we don't have aircon, so we have the windows open, uh, so we've got more. the noise of obviously the mug. The car builder's sun deadening and heat insulation really helps. So now we can compare from before we had air muffs, now we don't have to do yeah. that, we can still talk. Mm -hmm. But after a few hours, like long drive, like the Nulabo, like when it's especially like long straight, it was quite like draining. Well, yeah, and I find it the most tiring to drive in cities because, because there's eight gears and it is slow and the way it is geared you're just constantly going through the gears and even me as a co-pilot i would say it's i have to be a bit more on alert than i was with the jeep uh, like you know checking if there's a tree or mm -hmm. spotting or like things like that mm -hmm. even for like little things like finding parking and like constantly looking on the gps yeah. finding somewhere where we can park um now talking about parking we haven't had too many issues in general where we go we don't go in main cities usually so we've been pretty good in that respect maybe the height in some places would have been uh, an issue, a issue. Cities, yeah we saw a couple of gas stations that um they were station. too low they weren't in a city they were quite remote uh -huh. we obviously can't do any underground parking um and yeah. the big one that you don't think of when you've got a track is you can't go to normal car wash mm -hmm. so we've got on board a little pressure washer that we actually didn't show but we uh, washed it in experience for the first time just like um at the boat ramp and uh, yeah that was really handy it was like 49 dollars from bunnings this pressure really washer cool. it's really good you just need power yeah uh, well sorry you need water we can plug it into the truck that was really work. good and yeah. sometimes you can have truck wash or we found one on the air peninsula which was amazing but you can't find truck wash everywhere mm -hmm. so that's one thing to keep in mind now in terms of recovery if we ever get bogged one day which i hope not um we there wouldn't be many vehicles that would potentially get us out no we, no yeah. hopefully the max tracks that we've got so far we've used them a few times we've been able to self recover um the mug uh we've got two winches so we've got as well the saber recovery kit hopefully we quite well equipped yeah we've, we've, we've got a brand new huge saber recovery kit that we'll show you um pretty soon in one of the next vlogs because that's very new to us and um yeah so we've got much better peace of mind knowing um knowing that we've got all the gear but yeah like Ange said if we are properly stuck a normal four drive is not going to get us out and finally i guess one of the main downfall of the mug is because i guess it's it's really big and heavy we are quite slow and underpowered so mainly on hills this is where we suffer on the general speed doesn't bother us too much with full timers we travel around like 85 kilometer an hour yeah. but yeah on hills mm -hmm. is yeah so 
I would like to upgrade the turbo at some point in the nearish future <laughs> because going up hills is not fun in this vehicle. It's not fun for the vehicles behind us either. And um, yeah, it's, it's not a high powered engine. I mean, that's it. It's built for low end torque. It's built for driving slow over any terrain. So it's no, it's no pavement princess, that's for sure. It, and then the final topic we wanted to talk about our future plans with you Ooh. because it's been quite a discussion we've been having i guess the past few weeks so yes i guess for the short term uh we obviously want to finish our lap around australia so we still got the northern territory to take off which we're about to head in the future weeks and then i guess all tropical north queensland so cape york and i guess all around cairns yep and, and then we, we don't know yeah, and, and if you're unfamiliar with the area, we have to do that before the summer rains come. We have to be all through Cape York and back down past lower than Cairns on that side before the... Yeah, October? Yeah, so maybe October, November, we would want to have finished up there. So there's a little bit of a time restraint, so we don't want to dilly-dally too, too long. Much. We'll need to go straight up the guts and then and then across, uh, across the top. Now, probably our biggest thing that we are trying to wrap our heads around is that we do want to add a plus one to the mix i'm we're not really desperate to do it straight away but at the same time we would love to get this vehicle overseas and we feel like if we get the vehicle overseas it's going to be very hard to then stop the train once it's begun because we can't just park the Unimog up somewhere and fly yeah. to New Zealand or fly to France for Tanji's right. family. Complexity. So technically Australia would be the best place mm -hmm. safety and ease wise for us to have a baby. And visa as well. And age wise, I'm 35, I'm Ange 30. is 30. So we're at that time where we could definitely wait a couple more years, but if we're overseas, it's going to be tricky. It's a hard one. Yeah, it's a hard one. We're trying to put rationale to something that's not necessarily a rational decision. <laughs> yeah, so that's one of the main thing we, like I guess, discussing, but as well, the main important thing is we want to go overseas, but then there has just so many options and we are, I guess, yeah. quite open-minded with where we go. We just want to go. So right yeah. now we're getting quotes for all part of the world. Um, so a few of the options that we've brainstormed recently are Southeast Asia, Africa, Europe, North America, South America. So five options. That's a lot of options. I guess Middle East as well potentially. Um, mm. So without, I guess, giving too much more details, maybe we'll talk about it in a future video. We would love to know what you think where would you see us going where would you like us to see us going because yeah, that i you, guess as well will give us a good indication yeah if you could think oh i would love to see these guys in the uni mark here where would it be let us know there's always issues with visas there's going to be issues for us with carnet and how much that'll cost there's some things that will potentially stop us but it'd be awesome to know where you would like to see this vehicle mm -hmm. even if it's in maybe a year's time yep. unfortunately covid prices seem to have blown up the shipping costs so yeah. we'll so share far, with you some updates like as yeah. we go because right now we still at the research phase so you will We'll talk about that, I guess, on future vlogs. Yeah. Here we go. And as well, I've got just a final little uh, favor to ask. We have recently entered the Australian Frontline oh, Machinery you. Giveaway, the Mod Challenge. That was a before after mug. And the first prize is a $600 fuel voucher, which we would make a great use of it. So I'll put as well the link in the comments, in the description, if you could just pair maybe like 30 seconds just to vote for us, that would go a really long way and would really It's a competition it. to see who's done the best XRME before and after transformation. Yeah, yeah so. so hopefully we can win. Vote for us, please. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's it for this video. We next week will take you along, I guess, traveling again. We are very excited. We'll start with the Flinders all the way to the Simpson and a few like obviously D2 along the way and all the way to Northern Territory. So yeah, can't wait to take you along. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you. What did you say? See you.